with us here on Market Guru. Joining us on the show today, Purinju Veliatha, Managing Director and Portfolio Manager at Equity Intelligence. Uh, Purinju, good morning. Good morning, Nova. Markets um, have been on a roll, and I know you're always usually bullish, but uh, what are you making of the recent run-up? Do you feel that momentum is clearly back? Do you feel that it's still a little bit more of a bounce and perhaps there's, there's a longer way to go? Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, Indian markets have a very long way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, I still believe, uh, you know, uh, there is a fundamental, a structural change for not only the economy, even to the stock markets, even to the politics of the country. Okay. There is a major shift, a major structural change. Uh, so uh, investors should take it very seriously. Mm -hmm. And it's basically positive change, not any negative change as such. Uh, so, uh, you know, we we remaining at this kind of a very low market capitalization, as I always say, compared to the population of this country. Uh, it is it is almost impossible for me to think about a bear markets, as I told earlier. Right. Uh, and the recent run-up, what you have seen is basically it's a rational move. It was not any uh, rally or kind of thing. I don't consider what happened before that. You know, index uh, Nifty going to 7,000 and below. That was irrational, and that was something. Uh, uh, it happens once in a while. So uh, the bounce is a rational movement, a rational correction of. The mistake happened earlier, or the uh, the irrational move happened earlier. So that is how I am seeing the market. And we can say I still believe uh, maybe 8,000 of the Nifty mm -hmm. is something like a bottom for the market, okay. a rational bottom, I would say. Uh, so that way, uh, investors can be comfortable uh, in stock picking uh, in the market environment. OK. Morning, Purinju. Uh, so if uh, I, I was somebody who really didn't know much about the market, uh, mm -hmm. and, and I was ready to invest at this point. What do you think my one-year return could be if I just bought the Nifty? Oh, Nifty, Nifty can give you maybe a, one year from now, uh, maybe something like a 15, 20% return. OK. So technically, you think that 9,500 should be a reality? I don't know anything mm -hmm. technically. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying 9,500 uh, yeah. would be a reality in, yeah. in about a year's For time. The, that I feel, uh, again, as you say, technically. Sure. Uh, the fund flows that could come to the Indian equities, that will uh, make it, you know, that valuation adjustments, whether it is a 17p or should be 20p, that, the, that, that thing happens purely technically, if you are asking me, uh, on the fund flow possibilities uh, or the visibility. That way, I believe uh, there can be uh, much more than expected institutional funds flowing into the Indian markets, uh, and even domestic funds, domestic individual investors, they may also find equity as a, a safer and attractive bet uh, so there can be 20, 30 billion kind of FI money coming in next one year. I won't be surprised. Uh, and an equivalent amount of uh, fresh net uh, mm -hmm. domestic buying can happen. Uh, because our markets, uh, uh, as I told, you know, it's, uh, it's, it has a long way to go. We are too small. Uh, now, if you say the Indian uh, market capitalization is something like 1.3, 1.4 uh, trillion dollars, uh, I feel, uh, considering the other aspects of a nation, it is like a beautiful mid-cap in the global uh, environment. So this mid-cap has a potential to become a large cap. So that is the way you should look at not only the economy, even the capital market capitalization. And that is the big picture of opportunity for the investors in India. So, um, uh, so but still I hear a lot of people, analysts and all, you know, they are looking at some, making some number crunching and some uh, developments, some uncertainties and the challenges in the economy. So some of them are talking, using the word bear market. So it is basically they miss, they don't understand what is bear market. I will say what is a bear market. Perhaps, uh, I think 26 years ago when I entered the equities, uh, my, I started my career, uh, you know, the Nikkei, right. the Japanese uh, stock index, it was something like uh, around 38,000. I'm talking 26 years ago. Now it is, I think, around 17,000. So that not even half of that after 26 years, yeah. that is called a bear market. See, okay. a growing economy like India, a very dynamic uh, country, and a, and a small base of economy, uh, when a Nifty goes to 9,000, and it goes to 8,000, and because of uh, lack of knowledge, it goes to 7,000, uh, because of ignorance of a lot of people, including media, it goes to 7,000 and below. Uh, that is not bear market. That's only a correction of a rising market. Okay, so so you know, Purinju, um, what's what's now changed as well in terms of sectoral bets since we last spoke? Nothing has changed. 
but the perception of investors changes on each sector some people say no sugar is good mm. uh, then some others find uh, you know uh, cement is good and a lot of cement stocks go up and uh, pharma was in the fancy earlier now there is some setback for the big pharma companies because of us fda and kind of uncertainties so there is nothing uh, nothing drastically changes in the economy in any of the sectors of the country i'm telling you any of the industries but only the perception on these companies industries changes and that that uh, that results in very big volatility in the stock prices of the industry and the companies so otherwise i don't think anything has uh, made any major changes things are changing in many sectors for the country on a long term basis with a longer vision that is the real fact so it is all positive only now we take agri or rural economy the agricultural stocks or stocks related to the rural economy now some people have start start talking about it but uh, this is this if this there were many months ago i have been talking it on media you know the the agriculture stocks and the rural economy they have been they have been doing very badly because right. of uh, the drought and many problems and right. uh, mismanagement by the politicians in the earlier uh, decade so now there is a major shift happening a sea change happening in their sector not only the, we can't control the monsoon but the government the policy makers can do many great things now the central government they are talking about the farmer income doubling in the next 6 years right see it is not a so small silly thing to laugh at this is a very serious at least our government is dreaming about it that's a very welcome step and and some people believe you know doubling the farmer income is impossible in 6 years do you think so <laughs> no this has to be done in 3 4 years that's yeah. what I, i have talked about it earlier also doubling the farm because of the farmer income what is the farmer income today it is near to zero right, right. so it's such a low ridiculously low level of farmer income Uh, doubling in six years, I think it is uh, it, it is uh, very much achievable, and we everybody should work for that instead of criticizing such kind of moves. So there are many uh, structural changes happening in many sectors of, of the economy and the economy itself, and in the politics of this country. Pranju, just in terms of uh, sectors, uh, what 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 part of the market do you like? Do you like pharmaceuticals, uh, steel? uh would you run with those with the strongest momentum at the moment like sugar or would you buy into stuff like pharmaceuticals where you know as we were talking during the break the markets uh, been a little sus uh, skeptical about them uh i like every sector of the economy sure. from a stock investor perspective and uh, i'm i i like more of uh, the badly performing sectors that's my speciality uh, i always uh, uh, have a habit or uh, my style of stock picking i pick a stock uh normally when there are some problems some negative perception in the market about the sector or the company uh provided that uh, sector deterioration should not be permanent and it doesn't happen that way you know now i i used to talk you know uh, recently i talked about uh, nalco national aluminum at 30 rupees on my twitter account i suggested this stock at 30 and that was a time the uh, the aluminum prices were so low the sentiment was the worst uh, everybody was selling off the stock So now the stock is up by 50%. So I I had just uh, tweeted yesterday, you know, uh, you buy aluminium stocks when the aluminium prices are the lowest or or very low. You sell it when the aluminium prices are good and the media talks good about that sector, then you will be getting at least 50%. This is applicable to any industry provided this industry has got a relevance for the future and a role to play in Indian economy. Th th those things are very important. They are the base. uh standing on that base and the platform i am telling you uh, india uh, stock picker this is one of my idea i am telling you if you somebody can really take it up when when there are negativism ab about a company or industry and and at the same time this company is of relevance for the future and important for the economy uh, and for the demography of this country or if they are exporting if it's important for the world you know that that is where you make multi baggers and uh, even uh, i remember one year ago i was uh, i, w I was uh, on uh, bloomberg we discussed a uh, segment if you remember the real estate yeah but i have failed you know i have that's that uh, uh, those stocks haven't gone up much even though dl of that time went from 110 to 170 and has come back um uh, but i am still bullish on that sector even though there was many challenges and volatility happening so this is because the the intrinsic value of a company with with a future relevance and today's pricing so so that is where there is a huge mismatch among the price of these companies and the value of those companies investors should take advantage of that right. 
there are some companies uh, are quoting at one tenth of the value. Basically, the price is one tenth of the value. Maybe there can be there can be you know, management issues or the temporary challenges on the industry. Uh, but but that is a common sense approach. Right. Those who do number crunching cannot can never find these things mm -hmm. because here you have to have insights to the future future working of this company in the given industry and economic environment. So I believe even uh, some of these uh, real estate companies, as Ashu was asking about the segments, uh, like DLF and uh, Anandiraj kind of companies in Delhi, and even Mumbai we have uh, uh, Ajmeras and Oberoi Realtors, even Godrej Properties. I think it's a great long-term blue chip company for investors to own. I am confident Godrej Properties uh, could be delivering at least uh, 20 to 25 percent CAGR for next 10 years. That's not a small thing. When we say 25 percent CAGR for next 10 years, it's a huge wealth creation. And uh, that is possible uh, if you pick some 10 companies or uh, six, seven companies like Godrej Properties. Uh, with some kind of visibility, with the brand, the trust factor, and the business model, and the relevance of that business model in this country. Uh, you talked about real estate, uh, Punju, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, compared to, let's say, a Chinese market where uh, there are hundreds of ghost towns and construction is overdone, I mean, we're still, uh, the issue really seems to be more management quality than demand. How do you then pick the two or three right real estate companies to, to play the market, because the demand's still there? Yeah, uh, considering our demographic structure, uh, the demand will continue to be there for next many decades, perhaps. And uh, maybe it's not in the premium segment, uh, maybe the mid segment and affordable kind of uh, housing. We we are in shortage in in uh, you know in millions of numbers. So uh, some of the companies are changing the management perceptions, uh, their style of functioning. Normally, these companies used to be like a family uh, business. Uh, type, you know, not very professionally managed. And many of those companies were lacking transparency for the shareholders. So those things are changing. So what investors can uh, bear in mind, uh, identify the changes happening in this management structure and style in advance. If they're turning positive, uh, I think that's where a lot of uh, value will be added. Maybe uh, uh, now Shoba developers, uh, Godrej, nobody will doubt yeah. about the integrity and professionalism in these companies, even Obroi realities. There are some companies below them by quality, by, by the perception, uh, percept, uh, quality by perception, uh, much below. And some of them are like still people such or companies kind of, you know, uh, branding is there. Uh, but some of those companies will come out of that impression and it's happening. It's a, I'm telling scores of companies in the real estate sector and even in the infrastructure segment. They, their management quality is going through a sea change. They have learned from their mistakes. Some of those companies uh, have learned uh, mist the mistake of over leveraging but paying a heavy price. Some of them are getting closed. Some of those companies will not survive. So it's a mix of all these kind of quality and you know uh, kind of companies. So. We have a, uh, but still investors have got a huge, uh, you know, option and choice. So that's a positive. So do some homework, uh, watch how these companies' uh, managements are changing for better, getting more professional, how, how their attitude towards the minority shareholders. That's most important. When you buy shares as an investor, the minority shareholders, how they are taken care by the management and the promoters. Mm -hmm. uh, what is their attitude towards them? Uh, the rewarding attitude or wealth-creating attitude. And uh, so those things are getting uh, a sea change among, uh, in some of these industries. And traditionally, these companies, these industries were considered, you know, that was the biggest challenge. Management quality used to be the biggest challenge for stock picking. It is changing. There are some companies emerging, and some of the companies which still investors feel uh, chore companies. I can, I can tell, I can guarantee you, some of, many of those companies are going to change. There are already symptoms in many of them, and I am monitoring them. Uh, if you're playing on the economy, Purinju, what about PSU banks? Are you at this moment saying that's a good place to be, or but just PSU, not the HDFCs and the ICIC, the smaller PSUs, Indian Overseas, Kanara. Sometimes we underrate them, but some of these banks are, are pretty strong in the regional area they're in. Uh, I don't love to own these companies because uh, if, there is not enough clarity, uh, even because we know what has happened till now and including this last financial year. But we don't know what will be the kind of uh, uh, NPS, potential NPS further 
in these companies, you know, going forward this year or next year, or maybe afterwards. So uh, when we have companies with quality and the, and the clarity on the future, I don't think um, one should take uh, too much pain of analyzing these companies. Uh, but they, they may be they may be good at these levels. You know, they, many of them have fallen so much at multi-year lows. Uh, it's, for me, I, I feel like neutral. I don't. I, I don't feel personally uh, like analyzing them. Even somebody uh, is very particular about banking sector exposure. I would say still uh, look at the old generation private banks. Some of them, like um, like Federal Bank and South Indian Bank, uh, many South based uh, banks. Uh, look at their uh, NPA situation and quality of management kind of thing. And most of them are very professionally managed nowadays. Uh, uh, I feel uh, you know. That is the sector where there is some clarity uh, going forward, rather than the PSU banks uh, in general. So um, uh, it's lack of clarity, and I would try to, uh, I will still avoid that sector. I haven't invested in PSU banks for the last 15 years. OK, IT is the other uh, pocket in focus. Uh, we have uh, of course, still watching out for Wipro today. We'll try and get you a sense of the numbers uh, that we're looking at uh, in a moment. But uh, IT, uh, I mean, Infi, TCS have all reported. Uh, Purinju, where does IT stand on your list? Uh, <laughs> a good, decent set of numbers. And mid-cap IT also seems to be performing. Um, yes, again, uh, we used to have very good clarity uh, years ago. Uh, maybe a decade ago, or maybe five years ago, on Infosys and TCS, the kind of growth map. Uh, I f personally find I'm not an expert on IT, uh, and I don't have any major exposure in that segment. Um, now we have very now TCS. Uh, I don't know how TCS performed today. It's uh, something like 70 plus billion dollar uh, market cap company today. Um, Infosys uh, also is, is a great company, uh, but how these companies are going to grow next five years? I don't know, do you have uh, some clarity? I think there is a lack of clarity for these uh, very large IT companies in India. Uh, because the last 10, 15 years was different. Uh, one should not go by that uh, history okay. uh, going forward next five and 10 years. So, uh, so I feel at 5 lakh crores kind of a market capitalization for TCS, I feel risk uh, from different aspects. See. Going by the numbers today, nobody can say it's an overpriced stock or even richly priced stock. But uh, looking at the clarity of growth and profitability and the business potential for the next five years, I feel there is, uh, there is something lacking in that point. And, and it's a very, very, very uh, expensive business, a, a costly company when you say $70 billion. And this is a Tata managed company. That is also another risk for TCS, which nobody else will tell except me. Right. Uh, now, you see, um, Tata's have managed to um, destroy wealth in most of their companies in the last decade. I'm not just blaming th that Tata's are bad and uh, kind of thing. Not, not that way, but it's a fact. These companies now say uh, Tata, Kim, Tata um, uh, Global Beverages, mm -hmm. Indian Hotels, uh, there are some great companies with a huge potential, if you see last five years ago, 10 years ago. But these companies, they did not create wealth for the shareholders. Rather, some of them have destroyed wealth. So this, is, this was basically an inefficient style of management at Tata's. So uh, normally an Indian, what they think, you know, Tata is a great name to trust. Uh, but as a minority shareholder, I feel risk uh, from that management uh, 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 track record also. So TCS is a, it's a, it's a great company, very professionally managed. Tata's own it, but uh, but uh, and the industry uh, uncertainties and Tata management all put together, I find one should be cautious. I'm not telling anything bad about this company. It is as on today, it's a, one of the greatest company in this country, and uh, it, it will. I hope it will continue to be so. Now you see the JLR kind of thing happened. It's only accidental. See, when they were buying a lot of waste around the world, JLR was an accident, and that company got saved because of that. Otherwise, you can imagine what would have been the situation for Tata Motors. So uh, there are industry-specific challenges also. I'm not telling everything, uh, blaming the management. Uh, so this TCS kind of uh, very highly priced businesses in India, uh, one need not be very excited unless there is a clarity of the business model going forward, which is lacking in TCS. 